many people. What is the outlook for a settlement? Well, I'm not really privy to the uh, negotiations that are carried on in Washington. Uh, negotiations did break off yesterday afternoon after having federal mediation services in, and uh, I'm, I'm not really sure where they stand right at the moment. Proclamation from Governor Preston Smith at the end of the 62nd regular session of the legislature heralded the beginning of the first called session of that legislature, a session which Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes says should be ended by Friday, but which House Speaker Gus Mutcher says probably will take till sometime next week. It was brought about by a failure of the legislature to agree on congressional redistricting, and that'll be the main business of this session. However, also to be considered will be a liquor tax bill, necessary because of the advent of liquor by the drink. There'll be other requests for items to be considered, but whether the governor will allow them to be or not remains to be seen. The final activity of the regular session was passage of an ethics bill, the outgrowth of a stock scandal which broke at the beginning of that session. Representative Jim Nugent, sponsor of the House version of the ethics bill, was visibly angry as he came to the Senate to tell Ralph Hall, the Senate sponsor, that the House would accept a relatively strong ethics bill, apparently because of relatively strong threats by Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes. Barnes gaveled the ethics bill into law with only seconds to spare before the midnight deadline. Earlier, Representative Curtis Graves of Houston launched a blistering attack against House Speaker Gus Mutcher in a personal privilege speech. Today, a number of House members joined Representative Sam Coates of Dallas in announcing that they're withdrawing their support from Mutcher as Speaker. There's been a, a great deal said about appropriations, and I know I'm extremely disillusioned with our appropriations process in this state, and I don't believe that I can support him in the future with the method of handling the state's appropriations bill. That's one reason I voted against adoption of the conference committee report last night. We added $22 million to our state appropriations bill that neither house of the Texas legislature had ever debated one minute. And then we cut off debate in 10 minutes and wouldn't let people discuss it any further. And that's just not right. Does this mean that you're joining the so-called dirty 30? No. Before jumping into the official duties of this special session, Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes took time out to talk with us about matters of the legislature. And, and whether Governor Smith says for the Senate to pass the Senate redistricting bill or to allow the constitutional board to draw the district lines, I think all this can be done in a relatively short period. So the regular session is over. The special session is underway. Perhaps an old saying would fit well here. There's just no rest for the weary, whether they're legislators, their employees, voters, or even newsmen. This is Austin McDonald, Channel 8 News on the Move in Austin. For the first time in 52 years, you can now buy a legal mixed drink in Tarrant County. Mickey Finn is proprietor of Mickey Finn's Gay 90s Lounge in Arlington, and he got the first license issued by W.A. Phillips today to operate uh, and serve mixed drinks in his lounge. What do you think this is going to do to business, Mickey? I think it's going to be a tremendous asset, not only to us, but to all lounges in the area and in the state of Texas. As a matter of fact, I think it's going to create a tremendous business boom for Texas, convention-wise, things of that nature. Living in Arlington, a uh, site of Six Flags and Seven Seas, odd infinitum, can you see that helping the tourist business here in this area? I think it'll be a tremendous help to the tourist business. By what degree do you suppose it'll expand your business? I would say that it would increase our business at least 50% and perhaps more. So there's one man who's happy about it. You know, yesterday you couldn't do this, but today you can. You can now buy a mixed drink legally in an open bar in Tarrant County. And this is the first such mixed drink. Oh, I'm sorry, I never drink on duty. This is Jay Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Arlington.
A large portion of the damage done in the storm last night was done here at the Roy Rogers Marina and Boat Works. I talked with Rogers about the storm and what he saw as he witnessed it last night. We were in bed around 11 o'clock and we heard a normal noise which is because the jets fly over and it sounded like a jet and I looked out in the yard and our boats that's uh, on display were going around in circles. And the next thing I looked over the top of the building and uh, saw the debris and the boathouse in the air approximately 40 feet in the air. And I thought it was our pile driver, but then the barrels began to float and pop around and we knew the boathouse had gone over again. And we had heard a loud jet noise and we assumed at this point that it was a, a funnel because of the noise and the circling motion of our boats that were going in circles. How much damage do you figure you have here? About $60,000 on the boathouses and the estimated damage on the boats in the, uh, in the boathouses. He estimated the damage at the marina and the boats at $60,000. Most of the damage to the marina itself and very little damage to the boats. He said what he's going to have to do now is to cut it into three sections, sink it, and then refloat it right side up and move it back around into position. He's an old hand at that. You see, it happened to him almost a year ago today when another storm hit this same general area. He's hopeful that it doesn't run in threes. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move at Lake Worth. In the past, youth representation at the conference, at the uh, North Texas conference, has meant that only one youth was able to vote on measures in the conference. However, with this new amendment, should it pass all of the conferences or two-thirds of the conference as of it vote, the result would be that more uh, youth would be able to vote because it would be, uh, it would mean the ability of people under 21 years of age to be chosen from the churches to uh, vote at any conference. Do you think this will help bring more youth into the church? It will if the um, adult membership takes it upon themselves to realize that the youth have to become involved, to give them the opportunity.
Smith, governor of Texas, do by virtue of authority vested in me by the Constitution of Texas, hereby call a special session of the 62nd legislature to be convened in the city of Austin, commencing at 12.01 a.m. Tuesday, the first day of June 80, 1971, for the following purpose legislation to apportion the state of Texas in the congressional districts in accordance with the 1970 United States decennial census to consider an act on such other subjects in question as the governor may submit from time to time. The Secretary of State will take notice of this action, will notify the members of the legislature. When we indict any member of this body, we, I guess, stand indicted in total. Creative free system. What do you hope to accomplish by this? I hope to get the Methodist Church to take a stand. I think that so far in the conference we bypassed this, and this is one of the most critical issues that faces the church and the nation today. And I think that it's time that the church speaks out on this issue. Aren't you stepping across the barriers, constitutional barriers that separate church and state by involving yourselves in foreign policy? I don't think that we are by doing this. I think that we have to follow the conscience of our own being and even of the nation. And I think that in our, in our own conscience, we've got to admit that this is an unjust war and that we've got to take a stand against it.
I will. Uh, he walked out of his car with a fish basket hanging on inside of him and had a mineral bucket. And when as he got out in the water, he was going east and he put the mineral bucket right out of his neck and he got on my line. And I told him, wait just a minute and let me get my line out. I pulled my reel in and he was standing on it. So he just stretched and got the reel, a line and just taking it over his head and he turned back and went towards south. And I told him, I said, don't go too far out that way. And so he made about three or four steps, I said five, and, and he went on there, and he hit that turn and went on there, well, he hollered and said, come out, come out. And in the meantime, it, uh, he went on at that time, and of course, after that, well, all I seen then on, well, I seen his hand, about six inches of hand sticking up in the water, and he's fighting the water with him. So I hollered over there to the fellow in the boat to go over and get him, and they cranked up the boat to go get him, but he's going on at that time. Social issues are a very important part of this uh, uh, GOES project, and our writers have almost unanimously held up the problem of racism in the society and in the church as a problem that we must deal with effectively in the next 10 years, making sure that the Methodist Church in this area is a truly inclusive church. We are not yet an inclusive church. We're not a church where uh, black and white pastors can be appointed uh, without regard to race. Uh, we passed a resolution at this annual conference requesting all churches to respond to a, a request that, that they be ready to accept pastors without regard to race. But the realities of the situation are such now that we cannot do that. Again, to refer to the GOES program, I would hope, and I think all the Methodists in this area hope that that can be accomplished sometime within the next 10 years. First of all, I want to discuss this public market. All right, sir. Just recently in a newspaper, there was an article published where they're raising the fees double. Mm -hmm. Here they're, they're making it prohibitive for a man. To, he has to pay $10 a day before he makes a penny. Mm -hmm. He's a little businessman. He can't afford that $10 expenditure. They're not rich people down there in the in the public market. It should be responded. Uh, now that should be done. That should be done. Uh, but I, I can't promise you that it will be done. No, but, but I but I'm sure you, you want me to take it to the council. Yes, sir, I do. Right. I, I, now I can bring you a bunch of the dealers down there. Mm -hmm. Crowd your office. Mm -hmm. That's not necessary. I well, take it from a citizen's viewpoint. I don't think that's necessary. But but remember, that's still your. Uh, if, if you don't get any satisfaction from, from me when I take it to the council, that is still your prerogative and the dealer's prerogative to come before the city council. In fact, that's what a city council is for. That's right. So that's I want right. them to feel free to do that if we don't get something done on it. Oh no, I, 
that didn't concern me at all. Uh, I felt that uh, uh, I could serve on the board, and uh, that the fact that uh, we had some difficulties at first didn't bother me at all. Why was the city council asked to reduce its representation from 12 to 10 members? The board in the past had increased the uh, poverty representation to 19 members instead of 17. Therefore, they were too over in that particular area, and uh, they felt that it would be most essential to maintain that uh, uh, membership from the poverty areas, and we agreed with them. How about county government? Are they going to be asked to reduce their membership? I don't know. Uh, as you know, the county government only, uh, I believe, are 24 or 5 members. So uh, we had more members than any other government agency, and naturally we should have reduced ours. Mayor Stovall described the board as not being in a state of harmony. Uh, do you feel that uh, the reduction of city membership will restore some harmony to the board? It might. Uh, uh, destroy the thought that many had that the city was sending a delegation over there to take over the uh, and try to shape some policies of the board. Uh, this might serve to do that. Where did they get that portion? June 1st has come and gone, but here at the Dallas Museum of Fine Arts in Fair Park, they've gritted their teeth and tentatively scheduled a rental program to start sometime around the middle of the month. That program could have been in jeopardy because commercial gallery owners approached the Dallas City Council a week ago Monday, claiming that $240,000 that goes to the museum every year is a subsidy. The gallery owners claim it takes care of the overhead here, where they have to pay their own overhead. Well, they had so many complaints that the council suspended the June 1st date, which was supposed to be the renewal of the rental program at the museum, and negotiations for a ceasefire are now going on between the museum and the gallery owners. Nevertheless, there is a rental program scheduled to start, as I said, about the middle of this month, and whether or not it will continue depends on those negotiations, which are largely being conducted in secret. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move, at Fair Park.
Summer vacation began last Monday for students in the Dallas Independent School District. However, for the teachers and those in the administration of the Dallas Independent School District, what could be the beginning of a very long, a very hot summer may be underway. You see, there are a number of problems that have got to be solved by the time next fall rolls around and the new school year begins. Not the least of which is desegregation. Will, in fact, the Dallas Independent School District's current plan for desegregation hold up in the courts? The decision is expected in July. It might call for more teacher crossovers. That is a possibility, a speculative possibility, of 75% white, 25% black faculty integration required in every school in the Dallas Independent School District. Today, it's money. The classroom teachers of Dallas are meeting today with the Committee of the Whole of the Dallas Independent School Board. They're trying to see if they can't get those money problems ironed out, and we talked to classroom teachers of Dallas Executive Director Herb Cook about those problems. The move at Denton. Mrs. Elizabeth Ann Duke was dismissed as an English teacher here at North Texas State University last summer because the administration felt that she was not conducting herself as a faculty member should. The incident began over an alleged speech which Mrs. Duke made to some students on campus which included a number of four-letter words. However, Mrs. Duke appealed that to the federal court, and yesterday, Judge William Justice of Sherman issued a court order saying that her rights had been violated by the administration. However, she scheduled a news conference for today, which did not come off. In fact, Mrs. Duke even invited the administration of the university to take part in that news conference, but they declined. Today, the presiding judge of the Eastern District of the federal court, Judge Joe Fisher, of Beaumont issued a restraining order saying that Mrs. Duke, the administration of North Texas State University, and anyone else that is a party of this suit should not discuss the case publicly because Judge Justice's order was only a memorandum order and is not final until his final written judgment is given. The administration has proposed to use $750,000 to uh, have a two-year plan of getting teachers on step. According to their plan, uh, about 1,000 or 1,200 more teachers would be placed on the correct salary step the next few year. We would still have uh, maybe 1,000 who are not on step. That's about $500,000 less than what you need to complete the program as you propose it. Right. Another $500,000 or a little over um, cent on the tax rate would complete this plan that we uh, agreed to last year actually with the administration that it would be completed this year. But it has not been completed? No. 